All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope you understand my English. <laughs> okay, I'll take the next 15 minutes. And essentially, I'm representing today the Data Protection Excellence Network. We are a regional network of compliance officers, and uh, it's free to join the websites up there. If you want to ask data, I can type it in the chat for you. Uh, we have a few thousand people from across the region. So what am I going to talk about today? I know many of you are in IT and info security. I'm going to tell you the good news. There is bright prospects for data protection officers, yeah? as Pat Satrio, yeah? he himself taking certifications. So I'm going to talk about privacy versus security, right? developments in data protection region, some lessons from uh, recent enforcement cases. In fact, uh, uh, the previous speaker had even spoke about Sing Health, right? So we, I tell you about the key trends, then some practices. And the most interesting part is the role of the DPO. There is good news for all of you here, and there's very bright prospects, yeah? So first, privacy and security. Many of you here, in fact, most of you here are probably in security, um, but there is a difference between security and privacy. So just now, Pastor Trio is talking about CIA, yeah? which is in the circle of security. However, if you're talking about privacy, it's the blue circle, right? The two worlds actually meet. Huh? Right? So somebody who does security doesn't mean, or you have security already in place, doesn't mean you have met the data protection compliance. The blue circle is where you overlap. On the left side, notice and choice is not taken care of by security. Security and privacy meets in confidentiality, usage, and access. So having done now your data, your info security role, for you to take on data protection role is to learn the blue circle portion, right? Now, some of you already have ISO 27000 certification, for example. You actually may want to look at the extension of 27701, which is the privacy information system versus the ISMS. And then somebody I saw just now asking in the chat about cloud. You can look at the 27018, which has the cloud processor uh, standards as well. Right? So something to look at because there are standards now, even the ISO side, going towards data protection or core privacy. Okay, so this is bright future for all of you who are in IT. Now, you know the difference of what I just mentioned in the real world. If you remember this case, Cambridge Analytica and Facebook. Cambridge Analytica actually was, you know, the one that uh, brought into in, by Bannon, right, about the US election and they pulled data from Facebook. In this whole incident, there was no security breach. Basically, they just took the information by taking all your different contacts, details, and then get the profile using the API from Facebook. This thing became worldwide news. Why is it important for you as a company? Before, uh, we, during the case was happening, Cambridge Analytica had 15 million euros, 15 million euros. But because of this case, they collapsed bankrupt in six months. Huh? So the impact of privacy breach yeah, can be very fast because straight away it's enforced by the law, right? And this one became, it was the world's biggest privacy case at that point in time, Facebook was dragged in, okay? So for us as Data Protection Actions Network, we actually conducted a study on uh, what was the five trends of data protection for 2020. Let me just share with you quickly. First is the organization are shifting towards GRC, okay? So governance risk and compliance perspective, means risk-based. Next, the focus on third parties, which I'll cover afterwards. Some of you here are actually third parties, your vendors, right? You will probably be subjected to due diligence on data protection very soon, especially if you're dealing with multinational. Okay, next, cybersecurity threat. I think I don't need to talk about that anymore. Most of you are very familiar. There's a lot more threats on the cybersecurity side and mobile apps. In fact, mobile app, we have recently introduced a course for mobile app privacy, not security, privacy, right? And uh, we introduced that in Philippines in, together with the Privacy Commission there as well, okay? Next, standards. EU GDPR, which the, the uh, law for Indonesia is very much uh, based on as well. And ISO kind of standards are gonna be the benchmark, right? Where firms and DPOs need to know about because many countries and multinational benchmark against these standards. Last is certification for individual, yeah? So Pastor Trio talking about, he's taking on CIPN, CIPP and all kinds of things. Uh, those companies are now looking for two kinds of certifications, I'll show you afterwards, yeah? 
First, they're going to look at organization. What competency do you have and do you have any certification? Next, they're going to look at human being, the DPO who is operating. Does he have qualifications? And that's actually worded also in your, uh, in your law, right? Where appropriate qualification needs to be had. Okay, so let me just run through first one, organization. As a company in Singapore, uh, the government actually has uh, promoted a standard called the Data Potential Trust Mark. My company is actually certified under that. Indonesia, I don't know, it may be in the works, but you may take ISO, right? Individual on the right side, you want to look at certifications as recognized. So we have international certification of IPP, for example. We are the regional trainers in this region. Now come to companies. Can you ask, can you answer these kind of questions if you're being asked, right? What risk assessments have you participated in? What relevant SOP policies do you have? Have you received uh, training regarding your internal processes for data protection? How do you ensure your processes and practices are updated? How do you respond to data incidents? All these questions are very typical when somebody is gonna audit you on your data protection practice, okay? So coming to data protection, you just need to know four letters, eh? you've all got your pens. What are the four activities you do will subject you to data protection law? They are C, U, D, S, eh? okay? Collect, use, disclose, and store. Doesn't matter if it's PDP in, uh, in Indonesia or PDP in Singapore or Philippines. These four activities is the most common under data protection law that they actually have obligations uh, that control these activities. Okay, so in uh, Indonesia, you have 10 principles covering each of these activities, right? So for example, you have, you know, these sort of principles covering your site. You, we quote the articles here, right? Related to collection, you have three, three articles, or four, uh, actually more than that. And then you have two articles in usage. You know, you have a few more here in terms of the principles of retention security for storage and three more principles in terms of transfer and disclosure. So the DPO needs to know this, right? Because it's beyond uh, cybersecurity, okay? There are at least 16 policies involved in a data protection exercise, right? It's not just your BYOD or InfoSec, but there's more than that. But because you are already trained in cybersecurity, for you to do the data protection role, uh, it's quite easy because you can understand some of these implications and the impact of how the policies are connected. So I'll show you some sample of policies here, right? In collection, you have maybe four or five uh, policies you need to look at. Here in usage, your contracts, you got BYOD, right? You got your SOPs. In storage, IT mostly is in storage. And then the party contracts. So these are things that you actually have to look at when you're looking at data protection compliance once your law is enforced, right? Now, if you guys are in IT, you want to be looking at data protection by design, right? So few things to look at, look at compliance risks, using having a compliance dashboard, have a data inventory account data you're handling, especially personal data. How are those personal data flowing? And how are you doing in private impact, privacy impact assessment for any new projects? Last two years, a lot of people take on digital projects because of digitalization. So this is something IT need to be aware of right, as a best practice to overlay on data privacy. I'm sure if you are doing ISO 27000, you're quite familiar with some of these things, except these terms are related to data protection for personal data. If you're a third party, or you have a third party, you want to be looking at this. This one, most governments are now looking because many breaches have come from there. I think it's now uh, the previous speaker has mentioned as well, third party risks, yeah? So do you have these five things? Do you have a DPO? Do you have a policies, procedures related to data protection? Do you have, tr you have trained your staff on data protection? And accountability, what's your governance structure? Is there somebody who can answer to, do you publish on your website how you, uh, you publish your privacy policy, how you handle your privacy, right? So this is something mandatory. If you are a software developer, you want to be looking, you all know your SDLC. Do you do this whole activity across your, four, your SDLC? Yeah, what I mentioned earlier on, okay? So as a vendor, you want to look at that. In Singapore, if you want to do business in government, you're subjected to the data protection law. Although in Singapore, the government is not subject to PDPA, right? So right now in Indonesia, yours is applied for both, both public and private sector. So as a vendor, we're going to do tenders, you want to make sure you get yourself your house in order, right? And 
let's look at the enforcements in Singapore, some lessons, right? Top six trends I've seen. Number one, from all the cases we've seen, now we analyze the six, six key areas that have uh, major failures. No DPO or untrained DPO. Next, the staff is not trained in data protection. They will ask, and the staff doesn't know the policies or the SOP. Non-compliant vendors, right? So these two years, many of us have taken on a lot of new vendors for digitalization, work from home. So they actually check how you do DDEM. Next, data principles not applied to new processes, right? So this is something to look at. Weak security, that one I don't need to tell you. In fact, just now even Imbu Intan mentioned simple thing, not even cyber, right? Just the form to fill up at the bottom of the building for entry. And you and you, you keep you actually write it. If you're number 20, you can see one to 19, that's considered a breach, right? No clear incident handling. So this one, uh, your law, I think, will also have a timeline. If you have a breach, you have a clock running on you. In Singapore, it's three days, right? Do you have an incident handling plan? Okay. So these are the typical failures we've seen, right? Across the life cycle, no DPO, failures demonstrate accountability, no risk assessment. They will ask you straight away, how did you get to the policies? No policies, right? Controls are not implemented. No audits, no training. Breach response did not comply in time. So these are things is going to be important. In Singapore, there is a fine if you actually did not report in time, right? So these are serious in Philippines as well, in GDPR as well, okay? So... Let's look at the human. So I look, I look at it just an organization. Now let's go to the human side of things. This is where the good news is. Huh? Coming up in your law in Indonesia, there is, you actually need to appoint a DPO, data protection officer, if you are in public service operation processing personal data, right? Processing of routine personal data at large scale, right? If you are, person, if you are a private company, okay? And monitoring, uh, systematic monitoring of personal data at large scale and processing of specific personal data, okay? So what do they say in Article 45? The role of DPO is to be designed on the basis of professional competencies and expert knowledge. You just, go, you just can't get a junior going to do it, okay? So let's look at the market. Now I, I take from Singapore, I think it will, it will be the same trend will happen in Indonesia. In Singapore, we have seen 106 rise uh, in terms of well, this 2020, yeah? 106% rise in terms of jobs of DPO, right? For data protection only, you can see it's very big. And then some of this data protection and cybersecurity. Ladies and gentlemen, there is good news for all of you here who are in cybersecurity and looking at data protection, okay? This is month on month, okay? Right? So you can see 100% rise in a year. And yours, I think, will be even more. Look at Reuters, what they say. Hottest ticket in town, the data protection role. Number one, artificial intelligence. This one is on LinkedIn. Huh? AI. What is number two? DPO. Jobs. Huh? So now that you know this is a hot ticket, you want to be prepared yourself, right? You volunteer for it. What do you need? You may have this ex expertise, right? You may be in this kind of roles. What you need is knowledge of DP laws and skills, right? So how do you get these two? The good news is that you can get certifications easily. I just now I told you about Data Protection Excellence Network. We are partnering with somebody in, in Indonesia as well, but we actually have regional training and can be online. Go take on certifications and training. We have trained more, more than 5,000 compliance people in the region already, right? And what's the path? If you're in multinational, right? And you are actually having to also meet other laws, take on international certifications. Okay, if you're a large organization, this is something you want to be looking at. And I think Pasatrio, you're already taking two or three of these, right? So these are international certification. I can tell you guys, the, the international firms want to find qualified data protection professionals. In Singapore, there are a lot of hate hunting going on. The pay is rising like that and people are being pinched. Okay, so this is good news. You will not take on ISO, okay? So ISO standards, because if you are a third party, and you are going to bid for tenders, they're going to ask you, how do you comply to data protection laws? Take on the ISO 27701 up here, right? That is the most current where it has a privacy extension to the 27001, okay? So I really encourage all of you here that is, this is the, the dawn, right, of a new career. And especially most of you here who are in IT, whether you're public or private sector, this career 
it's going to be very bright for those who actually take it on. And again, we have these kind of courses online. Uh, then we'll be working partners also in Indonesia. I saw that uh, Cominfo has mentioned there's a track also. You're going to be doing that for training DPO. Here I'm talking about certifications as well. That's international. So it's complementary, right? So we're happy to really support Indonesia in the path here. Okay, so what is the role of the DPO? What kind of level? It is a management level. Okay, so you look at the stats, 48% mid-manager. Okay, right? So senior management, right? Martin, one more. more minute, please. Yep, I'm almost done. Yeah, okay. All right. So what do you do? Hopefully, I've read your appetite that you know the data protection officer role is important, especially for your organization to be accountable and able to establish best practice. How do you do best practice? Get yourself trained in best practice, right? In the certification path that we have. So go join this one, Data Protection Access Network. We have free videos weekly. We have webinars. Uh, we have forums. And we have chat groups with DPO. There are a few thousand of them there, right? So just go to this website and join there. It's for free right now. And we're happy to welcome you guys on board and happy to speak to you guys there as well. Enjoy your webinars if you like. All right, Pasatrio, right on the dot, yeah? Yes.